So, my initial idea that uh, the Warriors would take both games to, at home to open the series was wrong. Instead, Boston ended up in a three-way tie for the third largest victory in the history of the of Road 1 wins for the finals. They tied a pair of Pistons teams in 2004 and 1988, and they tra But before you start getting too confident, Warriors fans... Those aforementioned teams were a combined... 2-2 two and two in the NBA Finals so far. There have been 18 instances of a team winning Game 1 on the road in the Finals. Those teams are surprisingly 8-10. and 10. And honestly, it really should be 7-10, and 10, but there's a bit of a fluky format for the 1975 NBA Finals, which uh, came about due to some scheduling conflicts. So... In other words, if you win game one in the finals on the road, that's not any indication of the series at large, if you're looking in terms of historical trends. But before you start getting too confident, Warriors fans, Golden State led 100-92 at the start of the fourth quarter before Boston outscored the Warriors 40-16 to in the fourth. And no small part due to the three-point barrage. Brown, White, and Horford all hit a pair of three-pointers each, and the Warriors just couldn't keep up. I was definitely not right on how effective Tatum needed to be game in and game out in order for Boston to win this series. He went 3 for 17 in 42 minutes. Granted, he did distribute his way into a 13 to 2 assist turnover ratio, but still, Golden State can't rely on that poor of a performance from Tatum again. On the other hand, it's not unreasonable to assume that White and Horford continue to throw in 48 points on 11 from 16 from deep again. Your team definitely had some offensive issues in terms of distribution. I mean, it, it was not distributedly even enough. I mean, it's great that Steph put in 34 points, but Wiggins was the only other player to crack even 20 points. They put in 54 points. The rest of the team put in 56. That's a recipe for offensive stalling. You cannot rely that much on one player to win the finals. I mean, LeBron tried. <laughs> On multiple occasions. And look at how those particular finals turned out for him. I mean, when the Bulls and Jordan's 63-point game are more offensively balanced, that's an omen. That's not hyperbole, by the way. Jordan got 34 points out of Orlando Woolridge and Charles Oakley, his second and le third leading scorers in that game. By contrast, the second and le third leading scorers for Golden State, Wiggins and Thompson, put in 20 and 15 for a combined 35 points. And Jordan's Bulls were going against those 85-86 Celtics in Boston. You know, 40 and 1 at home, 60 and 7, 67 and 15 in the regular season. We'd go on to win the title in six games against Elijah One's Rockets with <laughs> I mean, oof. And before you start going off about how Oh, Jordan did uh, his numbers and a double overtime loss, and and as such, the numbers across the board were inflated. If even if you adjust the numbers to the end of regulation, Jordan had 54. His teammates had 62 in regulation. But back to the actual game at hand. As Alice enters Bud Skelter mode. Even though Draymond and Looney each split 20 rebounds and 10 assists between them. Draymond can't foul out. He's too important. They need him. Draymond's also got to be better from the line. I get that jump shooting hasn't been his strong suit. Outside of that one game seven against Cleveland 2016. But to go 0 for 3 from the free throw line is 
mm, unacceptable. You wonder if Kurt is going to lengthen his bench, too. If you look at the box score, you can count five players who all got a grand total of one minute recorded. And maybe Kerr lengthens the bench in order to find a combination that's more effective against Boston. Because if you do the same thing you did in game one, it's going to lead to a loss in game two. In which case you'd become only the third team ever in the history of the NBA Finals to lose games one and two at home. And it's going to be a real short series.